Youth and Education Law Project is an in-house legal clinic at Stanford, and we have what I would say the audacious goal of trying to provide and ensure that all kids have an equal and excellent educational opportunity. Our work is with low-income communities, children, youth, and their families, and ensuring that their schools are as good as schools anywhere. Why should we care about it? I mean, it it's, it's one of those things. We, we believe that social mobility, that the way up in the United States is based on your own hard work and your own abilities. And the only way that that dream, we call it the American dream, I guess, can be fulfilled is that if everybody has an equal shot at it, and that equal shot is through education. The school reform litigation that we work on is always work that bubbles up from our clients, problems that our clients are having, problems that can't be solved at the individual level, but instead need a systematic and systemic approach. And one possible way of solving those problems is to use litigation as a tool to get school districts or state school institutions to change the way that they do business. You know, just by way of example, a lot of the cases that we're working on in the clinic right now uh, are for youth who are either currently incarcerated or somehow involved with the juvenile justice system. And what's really, I think, challenging about those cases is that here we have a young person who's involved in mul multiple systems. They're on probation, they may be incarcerated, they're probably experiencing school failure, they definitely have emotional and behavioral difficulties. And the one thing that I think is common among all these young people that we work with is the systems have failed them. And so our job is to really ensure that whether it's the educational system, ensuring that they have a free and appropriate public education, ensuring that they are enrolled in their comprehensive high school when they're back in the community, you know, ensuring that the educational system serves them. Um, a good number of years ago, we were working in the Ravenswood City School District in East Palo Alto and seeing that children were not getting the free and appropriate public education that they were entitled to if they had disabilities. So under federal law, the district was supposed to provide those services. And so we knew that on an individual basis, we couldn't change the system. So instead, again, we filed a class action lawsuit along with colleagues at a nonprofit and a private firm to help ensure that not only was the district providing appropriate services, but the state of California was doing its job of ensuring that Ravenswood was serving kids with disabilities. More recently, we've been working with um, children in the Havasupai Native American tribe. This is a tribe of people who live at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, and there's a school down there. And the school is being run by the Bureau of Indian Education, and whatever it is that might be going on in the canyon, it's not education. And so what we're doing is working to ensure that the children down there, that that community has a real opportunity for an education, and ensuring that the federal government stands up and meets its its obligations to serve those children. So these are the general theme of these cases are these are problems that kind of bubble up from the ground and require a more broad or widespread solution and the possibility of using litigation to help prompt that kind of educational reform and change. We've also worked at the state level on issues such as educational finance reform. It's no secret that um, kids in different school districts get different kinds of education, mainly because of the property tax base that they have to work with, because most schools are funded that way. Um, in California, we have a different issue going on as well, and that is overall, our schools are not appropriately and adequately funded. And so we've been involved in litigation called Robles Wong against California or CQE against California. These were two cases that were kind of put together with an effort to try to ensure that all kids in, in California had an opportunity to live up to the state's own educational standards. We've, we work hard both in terms of the litigation that we do, but also in, ter in terms of the conceptual and doctrinal thinking, the scholarship that we do in trying to figure out how can we advance the educational rights of kids? How can we best enforce those rights, whether it's through state government agencies or whether it's through the courts? Think about education law as the efforts to ensure that all kids have an equal opportunity for an education, but it's even beyond the law. With my students in the Youth and Education Law Project, I try to teach them that you have to use a number of different tools, including policy tools and other kinds of advocacy tools to advance the rights of kids. And so education law is not really a traditional kind of legal practice in that sense. We try to do anything we can to help advance the rights of kids. <laughs>